All right, everyone. We are now joined by Martin Trex Jr., driver of the number 19 Auto Owners Insurance Toyota, who is the two-time defending champion or race winner here at Kentucky Speedway. We will open up to questions. Please raise your hand, and we will get a wireless microphone to you. We'll start in the back, work our way up through that side. They're coming to you, Matt, from your right. Matt Corson, KickingTheTires.net. Martin, can you just talk about your mindset coming into this weekend, having led over 300 laps in the last two races here? Definitely a lot on our mind coming here just because of, uh, you know, this year and what it's been all about. It's so different. You know, I think, um, you know, think back to the last couple of years and we've really been able to kind of come in here with the same strategy mindset set up, kind of, um, you know, look for the same things throughout the weekend. You know, now with the new cars this year and uh, PJ1 on the track, all those things, different tires. I mean, it's it's quite a bit different. So uh, we didn't have a great day of practice, but uh, hopefully we'll hopefully we'll make some good changes for the race. And uh, it's tough these days when you uh, you come with a new package, you don't get a lot of practice. So we were off quite a bit to start and uh, playing a little bit of catch up right now. I'm going to go to Dustin, Kelly, and then Mark. Dustin Albino, front stretch. Martin, you've had a good year, but what's the biggest thing you want to work on uh, leading into the playoffs? You know, I think just uh, being a little bit more consistent. Um, you know, it seems like we have a good race, or we win, then we have a bad one, then we win, and we have a bad one. So, uh, you know, you, you certainly, you know, approaching the playoffs, you want to be consistently running up front, um, you know, be able to be fast and, and um, perform well at each different kind of racetrack. So, you know, the mile and a halfs have been a little bit of a uh, – you know, kind of a puzzle for us, I guess. Um, you know, again, being so different than last year, we've hit it a few times, we've missed it a few times. Um, so hopefully just uh, find a little bit more consistency in what we're doing and, uh, and show up to the racetrack a little bit better. Go to Kelly. Right here. Kelly Crandall, racer.com. Martin, I'm going to go in a slightly different direction here. So about a month ago, a couple weeks ago, we had to talk again of trying to make an IndyCar and maybe a NASCAR Cup race happen on the same weekend, doubleheader type thing. Is that something you would be interested in seeing happen? And what track would you think would be the best for that? Oh, I don't know. There's a lot of people in charge of making things like that happen. Um, I think it'd be fun. You know, I, I certainly um, lo love to watch racing in general. And, uh, you know, I watch every IndyCar race I get a chance to. So it'd be cool to be somewhere on the same weekend and kind of get a little, up, little bit closer look at how they do things. I've never actually been to one of their races. Um, so it would be neat, I think, to hang around and, and check it out. But um, yeah, as far as making that happen, I have absolutely nothing to do with that. So we'll see what, what happens there. We're going to go in the bar back left corner to Mark, and then we'll be up here to Gary. Uh, Mark Garrow, PRN. Martin, a couple questions. First one, uh, your thoughts on not only the aggressive blocking near talking, you know, Brad got this, everybody talking about blocking with what he did in practice at Daytona. but. Do you feel like the level of blocking is something like you've never seen before, even on mile and a half tracks? Um, we saw even at, you know, with this the package we'll see at New Hampshire last week, we, we've seen some big time blocking, it seems, with every package this year. Is that something on the rise? And what do you think about it? Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's definitely on the rise. It's, uh, it's a big part of this year and, and this package. And, you know, if a guy behind you is faster than you and you know it, you just, and some guys are, are better at it than others or more aggressive with it than others but you know you're just trying to steal that air from the car behind you and uh you know the, the guy behind you you know his hands are tied when you block and you know especially in the corners you know on corner entry if you make a move to you know take the air off off the guy behind you you know there's not really a whole lot he can do about it so a lot of it um it's about anticipation and, and trying to find clean air and you know obviously on uh tracks with multiple multiple grooves it's uh, it makes it a little bit easier but it's it's a huge challenge and, and there's no question blocking has has become more popular how do you how do you feel about that just from the way you grew up racing in your style I don't like it very much but it is it's part of what we do now so um, you, know, you got to kind of just figure it out and um, you know you kind of just uh, you know, try to do all you can to keep the air off the guy behind you you know I don't know it just depends I mean there's I think at certain tracks it's it's different um, than other places and you know there's been times where um, you know I know a guy behind me is way faster and I don't I don't even do that I just you know I just let him go because it's just kind of the way I've always raced so it's uh, it's been interesting to try to figure it all out this year and, and by no means I would say I have it figured out but uh, it's been a challenge. One other question about New Hampshire next week in and, and the way that track now you 
use it, how much trust do you have to have for when you go into one? You're a lot of times if you're leading, you're going to give the guy the bottom because you feel you can get off the corner, get off to a little bit better on the high side. Just how much trust do you have to have there? Uh, I guess it depends on you know who it is and what at what point in the race you're at. You know, if you're coming down to the to the final and you know the end of the race, it's uh, it's pretty. Um, makes you a little bit nervous giving somebody at the bottom, you know, because you figure they're just going to run in there and drive in the side of you. So uh, it's it's become a completely different race the last, you know, two years since we started using the PJ1. And uh, we'll have to see when we get there next week just how wide that stuff is and how much uh, they're going to put down to see what the racing is going to be like. I'm going to come up front here to Gary. Uh, I'm Gary Graves, Associated Press. Um, in light of what you were saying about mile and a half and, and consistency, how can your success here at Kentucky help toward that end? And what can you take from this track that can help you down the line uh, at, at, you know, at intermediate tracks? Yeah, I think, um, you know, they're all so different. But I would say that um, if we could learn something here, we could certainly apply to Texas. You know, I, I would say that um, Kentucky and Texas now with um, having one flat end of the racetrack and one high banked end is, is they could be pretty similar, um, and, and we weren't that good at Texas, so we could certainly use a little bit of help in that department going there, and it'll be a playoff race, uh, you know, towards the end of the season, so it'll be an important one. Hopefully we can figure something out here that'll help us. Yeah. Uh, as a follow-up, I mean, looking back at last year, how dominant you were, um, do you, as a driver, do you kind of welcome the potential for another challenge, you know, coming back here to defend the race, and would you be surprised by that? I always welcome new challenges. I think that's one of the most unique parts about our sport and what we do as drivers and teams is, um, you know, this stuff is always changing. You know, you could win four or five races in a row or whatever, and they, you know, you go to a different racetrack and you're, you're, you got a new challenge. You know, they change the tires all the time. The rules of the cars are changing all the time. I mean, I, I, uh, I would say that all the top drivers are, you know, consistently working on. Um, how they drive the cars and how, how do they do better? How do you, how can you be better? Because everybody's doing that. So um, it's a huge challenge um, to, to, you know, try to stay near the top of this sport. And, uh, and that's part of what makes it fun. We're going to go to Bob and then Chris. Uh, Bob Hawkers, Fox Sports. Uh, Alex Bowman's first win a couple weeks ago kind of remind me a little bit of yours in the sense of kind of been around for a couple of years, kind of Dale Jr.'s kind of like appointed guy, you know, a lot of friends there, but what does that a win like that? What does that first win allow? Maybe a driver for a, the psyche and just like kind of being like proving who they are and establishing who they are. Yeah, I think it's huge to get that first one out of the way, and you, know, you just kind of you kind of feel like you belong. You know, you kind of feel like a lot of pressure comes off, and um, you know, you kind of before that first one, you always have questions, right? Like, when is it going? Is it going to happen? Is it ever going to happen? You know, what do I got to do? Um, what is it going to feel like? And so when you get that first one, all those questions are answered and a lot of the pressure comes off and, um, and you can just, um, you know, go about your job a little bit easier, I'd say. Go to Chris. Chris Knight, catch .com. Martin, uh, the last three races and five of the last, uh, five of the last eight races have been one from the front row would indicate that qualifying is really important. Is it really that critical? Well, I hope not. Cause I don't think we're going to qualify too good tonight, but, uh, yeah, I don't. I, I really don't know. I think um, as we figure this package out and as we've run it at all these tracks this year, I feel like things have changed so much. Early in the year, I feel like all the guys that ran good qualified bad, you know, and now guys are figuring out ways to have enough speed in qualifying to start up front and be able to have enough, have good enough handling throughout the race to stay up there. And that's that's been a big challenge for us is how do we get both? You know, we've had good handling cars at a lot of racetracks, but not a lot of speed. And we've been able to take advantage of good handling. So, you know, I, I don't know. I think that in a perfect world, you'd want to start up front because you get a good pit stall and you don't have to worry about traffic and getting stuck, you know, trying to fight track position throughout that first stage. Um, so I think guys are figuring it out for sure. And that's something that we are consistently working on and constantly working on. We haven't, uh, we haven't, as the 19 car, we haven't been able to figure it out quite yet. You go to the far, far left side and then go to Steve. Joe Dadaman with Fox 19 now in Cincinnati. Paul, your car, the way it's running today, notwithstanding 
when you do come back to a track that you've won two years in a row, do you have good vibes, good memories of coming back here? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, you always I'm do. Sorry. It's always nice to go to a track you have confidence at and, um, and, and you feel good about, but then you show up and it's always like, you know, like today we showed up and was like, oh, man, this, is, <laughs> this isn't too good. So uh, you, you're always reminded of how difficult this is, uh, what we do, and, and certainly today was one of those days. Go to Steve. Steve Schweitzer, the Lasco Press. Over here, Martin. This side. Oh, Thanks. Yeah, um, the track's been treated pretty aggressively with the traction compound. Is that a plus, a minus? How do you feel about it? I think it's too early to tell. Um, I, I, I really don't know. Ba based on watching the truck race, it looked, uh, you know, it looked like in three and four there were some options. Uh, one and two, I think, is just um, got so much banking and, and so much more speed that you know, running higher is just a longer way around. And we're already using so much throttle through the corners that you just lose time. So it kind of felt that way again today for us. It kind of felt similar to what we've seen with the trucks last night. Um, it'll be interesting to see how much it changes at nighttime, you know. And, uh, you know, is it going to grip up a lot or what, what's going to happen there? Is the bottom going to be better than it was today? So still a lot of questions. Um, I, I would say in general I didn't think the PJ1 felt as sticky as I expected it to be. I expected it would be – you know, really no chance at all of running the bottom and everybody would be in the, in the sticky stuff, but it seemed like there was a mixed bag, so that's always a good thing, I think. We're going to come to the far right in the front and go to Claire. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Justin Haley came in after his first practice and tore his car up as he came into the garage and just ripped the splitter in the nose, and he said that the, the surface of the track was not even or there was a grate or something, right? Have you ever had that happen? Because some of the other drivers said that they had bad experiences and they learned from it, right? If that, you come barreling into the garage and it's not what you expect? I've never had a big incident like that where something got tore up, but I've seen cars crash in the garage area before, you know, and, and I actually was involved in a crash in a garage area years ago in Chicago. So, uh, yeah, you just never know. You got to always be, uh, always be paying attention to everything. And uh, some places the infield has, you know, as you mentioned, drain holes and all kinds of weird stuff can happen. So, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Thank you. Go here in the middle. Jeremy Ralph, Fox 19 now in Cincinnati. Martin, it seems like since the repave in 2016, you've had a lot of success here, obviously. But some guys say that the, the track still needs character because of the repave. So where do you fall in the mix on that? And is there a connection to the repave and you winning the last two cup uh, races here? You know, again, I think we just found a, a package and a, a feel that I liked and, and ran with it, you know, and the cars were, were similar for, you know, all those years, 16, since they repaved it really, you know, low down force and the things you had to do to get around here fast didn't really change. Um, and so, yeah, we were able to just kind of run with that momentum and that, that kind of mindset or uh, that strategy of, of setting our cars up and things. Um, I think the track has plenty of character. The fact that both ends are so different, um, it's getting bumpy again. Um, all those things make it a challenge. And, and everybody talks about turn three here, just how difficult it is. I mean, I, I feel like you're going, you know, you come off a of two and you feel like you're going 180 and you get to you get to three and it looks like a parking lot you're driving into. It's just dead flat and there's, you know, the track's wide, but you just feel like you're going straight for the fence through, through the middle on, on the exit. So uh, it's got plenty of character and it's a really tricky place. Do we have any final questions for Martin? All right, Martin, thanks for joining us. Good luck tomorrow Thank night. You.